So I had but I'm I'm a little loopy. I had a long weekend. Yeah, you busted an eyeball and stuff. You see this shit? Did you see what I did to my fucking eye? What's what? funny is that, that one of the one of the bad guys on Fringe has an eyeball like that this oh, season. Oh. I'm gonna get up close just for the recording so people can see what I did to my eye. Just for this show. This is what I go through for you people. I don't know I don't know what happened. I just spent the last oh seventy two hours on and off editing, 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 rendering, rendering, adjusting, doing and then then I then I get up like about a few hours ago before the show and I go to the bathroom and I look in the mirror and I'm like, Well that ain't right. It it could also be like the rage. Because you have some rage issues. It could, it could be the rage. That, you know, hugging a hippo on a regular basis would really help you with, I think. And you have one because I gave you one. It's it's up there. I don't I don't go near it. It it's right there and I don't go near it. I don't go near it. So, shall we shall we do the nonsense? Sure. You sound so enthused tonight. Well, you know, I'm mad at you because you're not properly treating the hippo I entrusted into your care. I it's ain't in the closet, is it? The hippo does talk, actually. Someone asked if the hippo talks to him. That hippo does fucking talk. It does. It you squeeze yes. it in it. Yeah. It's 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 eerie as fuck. It's amazing. If I had, I have two of them, which is why I sent you one. And if I had mine nearby, I would hold it up to show them since you're not going to go and get yours, obviously. No, I'm not. Whatever. It's up there. Stay up there, creepy thing. All right, let's get started here. Okay. What? What did you No, say? I don't have I don't know. Sorry. I don't have mine on me. It's on the other side of the room. But I can see it from here. Doing the intro. I'm you, sorry. Each week Kathy goes out in the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff, brings it back here in a segment we like to call What the Fuck's Wrong with You. I had to speed through it. I normally have thirty seconds to play around there. I had to speed through it that time. What's going on? My world is scary. Alright, let's Let's start in Seattle, because if if you want quality crazy, you're going to the West Coast. And uh, this, this should be all you really need to know here. Woman set to marry building, undeterred by demolition work. And oh, the picture. I, I guess I've got to put this one on the big screen. Um... Seattle bruised or not, she says she'll marry her beloved building... As planned, come Sunday. Babylonia Ivas, I think I'm saying that right, bride-to-be is a 107-year-old warehouse that sits on 10th and Union in the Capitol Hill neighborhood. She has been planning to enter what she described as, quote, a gay marriage with the building. If corporations oh. can have rights as people, so can buildings. How does she know the building's gender? How do you sex a building? I know! What, what do you look for, though? See, these are the days when I really miss Steve Irwin, because he would tell us. He would know! He would know. Because it's not... But, yeah, like, there are still states where a man can't marry a man and a woman can't marry a woman. This bitch can marry a building. <laughs> Welcome to America. Uh, uh, That's some bullshit. This is an honest to god thing, though. Like there, there's. I saw a special on this once that people have like get like sexually fixated on objects. Like there's some lady that's in love with the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, but this apparently this one's doing one to because she's protesting gentrification. Oh, I do know that uh, this is not the way to go about it, though. Because when I see this. I don't think, huh, you know it's bad that neighborhoods, this happens to neighborhoods and buildings get torn down. No, I think, this girl is crazy! Especially considering um, they put the event on, uh, on uh, Facebook 
uh, for the she remained spirited for her planned wedding. She described the event as a community potluck and asked attendees to quote bring food. Oh my God! No, you have to see this part. What? When she learned the demolition work was underway, she rushed over to the site and changed into her wedding dress on the street. She was then seen climbing on the equipment and trying to get in the way of the demolition. Bad idea. But minutes later, she left, telling a KOMO news photographer that she was expected at work. (sighs) This is not helping your cause. I don't even understand (laughs) what your cause is, to be quite honest. I don't... I mean, all right, so she's trying to save the building. I... (sighs) Yeah, I... it's, It's... You know what? People are simple. And um, when, when, when you try and marry buildings, you're just confusing them. You, you're just... They're not understanding that you have a point or a a, 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 a goal. They, they just understand, oh, this crazy woman wants to marry a building. And that's it. That's all they're getting out of it. So... Yeah. You're not helping. Don't, don't do this. It's not helpful. But, I mean, it is an honest-to-God thing. Like, there are people who are... Oh, yeah, there are. Lady Bowsed and romantically attracted to buildings and objects. I mean, I don't really get it, but it's a thing. Yeah. I don't feel like that's the thing here. I feel like she just wants attention. And I say that because she had the potluck. She has a Facebook page for it. She ran down there, like, chained herself to a tractor, and then was like, oh, I got to get to work. Um, if you were really trying to save the one you loved, you wouldn't be like, oh, I can't be late for my shift at the Walmart. You know it's the Walmart, too. You just know. Or the Target or wherever you work. Whatever. Yeah, you're right. You know? It's the Target. She's in the Target. I mean, I, I work in a mall. I'm not, you know, but, you know, you know, it just, if you're really trying to save the one you love, yes. you're not going to run. To get to work. Speaking of getting attention, um, this is probably not a way anyone wants to get attention ever. Um, yet again, this happens. Yet a fucking again. This should be its own segment at this point. Drunken man goes in the wrong apartment, wrong bed. Kitsap County. Uh, I'm believing this is Florida. I may be wrong. This might be. Th- there are a couple of Kitsaps. Is this Florida? Someone verify. Is this Florida? Um, Kids of prosecutors are reviewing a Sunday morning incident in East Bremerton involving a 21-year-old man who walked into the wrong apartment and climbed into bed with an 80-year-old woman. Um, You'd think that would be a tip-off. It gets better. Um... The, the woman told deputies she was extremely frightened when the strange man climbed into bed with her. Between screams, she asked what he was doing. Quote, passing out, he told her, and went to sleep. Uh huh. <laughs> you know, I've it's woken getting to up. It's to the point where I feel like. If you're going to go out drinking, you should be required to, like... Have a buddy. Wear one of those big tags that they make the kindergartners wear that says, like, what bus you have to put them (laughs) on if they forget. Yes! You should have to wear a big tag with, like, my home (laughs) is 123 Any Street, blah, 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 blah. So that somebody (laughs) can return you to where you belong. (laughs) After you've had too much of the libation of your choice. I just, you know, I've woken up in some weird like, places before. You know what? I've never gotten Goldilocks drunk. You never have? No, I've never gotten so fucking drunk that I just wander in somewhere and fall in a bed. Has never happened. I I've have. gotten puking drunk. I've gotten, you know, giggly drunk. I've gotten sleepy drunk. You've but never I've never gotten, gotten amnesia so... drunk. No, never gotten blackout drunk. See, I woke Definitely up. Definitely never gotten like Goldilocks try out all the beds drunk. I woke up under a friend's ping pong table once. I have no idea why. 
I just I woke up and I looked up and there's the bottom of a ping pong table, and for like a few seconds I'm like, am I in a bunk bed? No, this is the floor. What the fuck is going on? It's one of because it, it was like the rules were broken. I don't know. But you weren't in a bed that wasn't yours, in a house that wasn't yours, with someone's grandma. No. Oh, God. I just... All the times you've ended up there, it was totally on purpose. <laughs> just, good Lord. That, po that poor lady. Oh, and apparently also, he peed on her floor. <laughs> oh, that's just rude. <laughs> he peed on her rug. Really tied the room together, did it not? Hey, hey, hey you, yeah. got, you got the friend shit, I got the Lebowski. I'm all about Lebowski. Yeah, I've definitely never quoted the big Lebowski on this show. Oh, no. It's mine. I Vagina. No, no, I don't do that bit all the time. Mm. Please, co-opt in my shit. Co-op. Mm -hmm. Technically, I'm older than you. By, like, six months. Technically, I have a cooler hat than you. What? Oh nothing. Nothing. Yeah, just for that, you know what? It's naked crazy time. Bring I it. Bring your naked crazy. <laughs> Can we stop? Don't, never say that to me again. Bring your just, naked crazy before me. Just never say that again. Possibly have had too much Pepsi today. Um, naked arrest man blames, quote, joyriding of his body. A man who was naked when arrested yesterday after allegedly threatening and robbing a Northern Territory police officer. He robbed a fucking cop. Uh, we'll have his mental health addressed, uh, assessed. Uh, Paul Thompson has been charged in a number of offenses, including aggravated assault, aggravated robbery, gross indecency. But you have to look at the space. picture. Look at the name of the courthouse. Darwin Magistrates Court. <laughs> that's, that's magic. Came to the right place. Yeah. He allegedly threatened an off-duty officer with a knife and stole his bag at a shopping center. Um, he then tried to escape uh, onto the on nearby foreshore. Police say he scrambled over rocks and attempted to swim away in Darwin Harbor. But officers used a boat and OC spray. I'm assuming that's some sort of pepper spray to subdue him. He was naked when brought ashore. Thompson said he should not be punished because someone was, quote, joyriding his body and programming him. Obviously. You know what? That I is... The obvious explanation. That I, I can't say if he's crazy or not, but you know what? Why not? Why not try that defense out? Why not try it? It might work. Well, you gotta pick which one. Is it the joyriding? Were you possessed? Or are you under mind control? You really want to pick apart the specifics of his, of his plot thread there you want to yeah <laughs> because if you're gonna go with that defense you should probably know which one it was you should know because if you're being mind controlled then you know what you're doing you just can't stop yourself if you're possessed you don't know what you're doing there's a difference and someone's gonna ask you that when Mulder and scully fucking show up and you should know you got to get your lies straight that's this week in how to be a criminal with tara <laughs> That's 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 the series we should ma get you to do. We we should get how to be a criminal. how to be a better criminal. Yes, yes. That that's how to turn smarter tricks and be a better burglar. Is uh, and all sorts of other things I have never done. This guy robbed a cop and got almost got away. How did I don't understand where he lost his clothes in all of this though. That confuses me. That that's always my question. Every time we do this. Like, I just want to yeah. sit these people down and be like, now tell me, tell me at which point naked came into the equation. Yeah, he's he's being pursued by police. He's in the water. He's running the hell away. How does taking off your pants improve this situation? To be all? fair, clothing does slow down swimming. I don't think this guy was smooth shade for aerodynamic water. No, no, but seriously, like when you take the lifeguard test... 
they make one of the tests is you have to like dive into the diving pool fully clothed with shoes on and then like get the shoes off get the clothes off make a flotation device out of your shirt and stuff like clothing that is all over the place will slow you down swimming so maybe that's what was going on there i don't know chris in the channel says uh naked equal invisible i think that's it i think that that's that's what happens i'm invisible can you see me Exactly, because you remember, you remember, um, oh god. Maybe we put on some pants before fighting any more crime today. Do you remember that Chevy Chase movie with the Invisible Man? I have not Memoirs seen of Chevy Invis Chase. Oh. Invisible Man. Memoirs of Invisible Man. And when it, he, like, he, he was visible with the clothes on, he took his clothes off and they couldn't see him no more. So, so, yeah. That's it. Take off your clothes, you're invisible. That must be the thinking. That's the only thing that makes fucking sense. I think the Mystery Men reference on that was better. I got it. I got it. I've seen that ridiculous movie so many times. Shut up. That's a classic. Greg can I'm the PMS Avenger. I only work four days a month. Is that a problem? <laughs> no. And, and I, I've got to. I've got to say, Catherine found us a plethora of just bat shit tonight. Let's. This is work, th this is one of those headlines that. I, this had to be a thing. That's what the what 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 confounds me. This this and this was required to be a thing. Canadian dwarf to tossing contest stirs controversy. A dwarf caught. I can't even say it. A dwarf tossing contest scheduled for Wednesday at a Windsor, Ontario bar has generated heated controversy, but local authorities say there is no law to prevent it. Barry Maroon, that's his actual name, manager of Leopard's Lounge and Broil, which I gotta say, any place named Leopard's <laughs> Lounge, it's not a place I'm going and to. And Broil. And Broil, that's, I'm not going to eat there. I'm not going to eat there. Um, told the CBC he saw no problem with the contest and even claimed he'd be getting calls from little people anxious to attend. We got to find something better to call them than little people because that just doesn't. This say. isn't a new thing, though. I know I've it heard is. Of this it... a bunch of times before. Ah, uh, let's see. Like a bunch of times before. I don't think it's gonna. You know, like I don't think they're gonna work it into season two of Game of Thrones or anything. But it's been around for a while. Why? Why is this a thing? Is this a sport? Yeah. You toss them for distance. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's like okay, but it's a thing. I, I've 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 heard of it before. There's also one where they put little people on skateboards and bowl with them. They wear helmets and they roll them down the bowling alley and knock over the pins with their heads. Can't we just build vomitoriums like decent people? I know, like we kind of do terrible things to little people in the name of amusement. Good God almighty. Good. Okay, look. No, I've got nothing. You just, I, I have to acknowledge there is a fan. Are there fans? Are there teams? Do they follow special people? You know, do they follow the, their better tossers? Well, it's not really a team thing. It's like individual competition. <laughs> Because you toss them for distance, it's like it, 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 it would be like a track and field event. Are, th are there dwarf tossing stars? You know that that are that are are have gotten you know like the big money demanding. How does this? Is this like ah? Uh, is there a league? Is there a federation? That I do not know. I mean, I'm sure we could find out. Do they have bylaws? Is there like... Is, do you, Does the dwarf you toss have to be regulation? Is there like a standard on it? Does he have to be no higher than... It's an event happening at a bar. I know, but still. I feel like you're putting a lot too much thought into this. Like, you're thinking like a gamer right now, and you're thinking rules. <laughs> when they're thinking, get everybody drunk, and throw, and throw a little, little person around yeah, for distance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I want it to make sense, and it's not going to make sense. But it, it's, it's, it's drunken shenanigans by jerks. Uh, let, let, let me ask you something. 
Have you ever had a job you were just bad at? Yeah. I have. To, I, I've had. And you know what? I had the decency to quit because I knew I was not good at my job. Th- this guy, this guy is probably worse at his job than I have ever been at any job ever. Greek police, uh, Greek priest held over treasure hunt. Police in northern Greece have arrested a village priest and church elder for allegedly digging for treasure around the altar in the church. Police statement on Friday says villagers complained of loud drilling noises. Officers found a two by one meter hole in the uh, chancel. What is that? You know the the the, the Catholic stuff. What is a chancel? Um, I don't know. It could be. I mean, it depends on what kind of church. If it's Greek Orthodox, Whatever. they have different stuff. It sounds like, um, like the altar area. Well, whatever it was, it was 150 years old, and the bastard was taking a pneumatic drill to it to search for treasure. It was probably pretty expensive. Churches have a lot of money. Yeah, I, I mean, the question is, was he just randomly digging for treasure or did he have like it doesn't say whether he had a reason to believe that there was treasure there. Yeah. Did he get a map? Did he get a phone call from Nicolas Cage one <laughs> night? You know, did, did, was, Speaking of Nicolas Cage. I know. I, I sent know. you a thing. Okay. But 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 yeah, like uh, I'm really I'm not, I mean, not so much Nicolas Cage. He is a priest. So you're looking more at, like Dan Brown in this one. Yeah. You'd have to have gotten tom hanks yeah but, because this is really more da vinci code the national treasure but this is this is no what this is is this is failing at your job in every conceivable manner possible yes i mean you can't your job as a priest is to protect the church and you know yeah you, not you, not drill a big horgan hole in it Two by two by one meter. That that's a six by three foot hole. Now, to be fair, had he found that treasure, he'd be a hero because the church would have so much money. Either that, or he he wouldn't be a he wouldn't be a priest no more. He'd be gone. <laughs> mm, you you yeah. got this guy is drilling with a pneumatic drill in the middle of the night. Nobody else is around. Yeah, Do you he, know, he's not staying with that. He's not going to be. There's an old B fifty two song that opens with the lines "Gyrate till you've had your fill," just like a pneumatic drill. And now that's stuck in my head. I know, I know. How it's the- off the Cosmic Thing album. I had it on cassette. I forget what the song. I think it's actually the title track. But you know, you have Fred. I forget his last name. Gyrate till you've had your fill, just like a pneumatic oh God, drill. Voice, uh... And now, because of the words pneumatic drill, it's going to be stuck in my head all night. Um, and if any of you know the song, it's stuck in yours, too. You're welcome. You know, we, we talk a lot about the dumb crooks on the show, um, but the next guy on the story, at least he didn't make the police have to work too hard. Um, this is, uh, Willowbrook. I'm not exactly sure where this is. They need to put state names on the fucking place. Willowbrook, uh, Willowbrook man called 911, asked to fight a cop. It's not a delivery service, man! And I gotta put him up on the big screen because just look at the look on his face. He's so proud. He is proud of his ass. Look at him. Just, yeah, I did it. 38-year-old Willowbrook man accused of calling 911 and asking to fight a police officer faces felony battery and resisting arrest charges. Uh, Police say John R. Priscilla of the 200 block of Stanhope Drive was arrested after a 911 call from a man who, quote, wanted to see an officer because he wanted to fight with them. When officers arrived at Pencella's home, he shoved the officers. Uh, He was booked on a $100,000 bail. Just why? It's not Domino's. No, it's not like you. It's not like Fight Club. It's not like you know delivery service. No, you do not get to 
like that's not what they mean when people use the slang phrase rent a cop not not how it works it's not what that means dude like you can't call up and be like yo send me a guy about six five 200 pounds i'm gonna kick the crap out of him I, no it's, no was this no. a bet did did he bet someone he would do this did, if I it just, was even if he won he lost yeah, hundred thousand dollar bail. You don't hit a cop. They don't like that at all. No. They get cranky when you hit them. But to be fair, he didn't get what he ordered. He did get cops delivered to his home, and he got to fight them. He did. So maybe he's a genius. <laughs> maybe it was all part of some insane supervillain plot. It was just like the first step. Like, the Joker, like, that guy had to get arrested because he had the cell phone bomb, like, all sewed into his innards. And, like, six months from now, our minds will be blown by this guy's genius. Sarah, is, th is, this, is this really the face of a genius? Come on. Never know. Come on. No, just Could be. Yeah, I think the safe money says no. <laughs> well, the safe money said don't call a cop and ask him to come over and fight you. And um, sometimes the safe money loses. Okay, this last story tonight is is going to piss off both of us because both. Oh, good. We both hate the dentist. You and me both. We, we despise the dentist. We've we've had so much I've, work done. I have a long history of villainous dentists. Well, this guy, this. If you've if you've had a root canal recently, you, you may want to just. Fuck this guy. Well, not don't fuck this guy, but oh, come on. Why isn't my thing working? Ah. And now That's we have to wait for... Fu Funny. Now we have to wait for Firefox to behave itself. Because now it doesn't want to. Can I click this, please? Thank you. Okay, um... You, you're... Don't, don't fuck this guy. Th this is... I, I won't. Dentists who use paper clips gets a year in jail. Gross! To do... To do, like, the cleaning out part of the root no. canal? Um... <sighs> Fall River, Massachusetts. This, this ain't that far from you, is it? No. It's like one or two... A couple hours. Yeah. A uh, former Massachusetts dentist was sentenced to one year in jail Monday for using paper clips instead of stainless steel posts in root canals. Dr. Michael Clare pled guilty early this month to illicit charges, including assault and battery, defrauding Medicaid of $130,000, illegally prescribing medications, and witness intimidation. Prosecutors said Clare sometimes used sections of paper clips when performing root canals in an effort to save money. Gross. Look, the economy sucks. I get that. Like, everybody is screwed right now. They're, except for, like, Mitt Romney. Yeah. Everybody is proper fucked for money. <laughs> I like that. I, I've heard that before, but I haven't heard it in a while. Everyone is proper fucked. I like that. Yes. But, like, that's not acceptable. That's not the way to cut corners, dude. Like, you cut corners, go paperless with your records. You know... It's just, it's hurting my mouth just think, Some of these guys got infections. Yeah. I'm just, oh. And, and mouth infection, it's not anything to, to screw around with. I, um. No, because you need that for eating. Do, do you remember Lorne on Angel? Did you ever watch Angel? Buffy and Angel? Um, I'm familiar with the character. I didn't yeah. watch Angel extensively. Uh, Andy Hallett. I actually knew him. Nice guy. He died of a tooth infection. Really? Yeah. Infected his teeth, got into his heart, weakened it. Dude. That yeah, you can get like a bad tooth. Yeah, gets like that infection can get to your blood, and all of a sudden your heart stops. Yeah, you you don't screw. This is you don't. And people who were using he was using the fuck this guy with a barbed wire dildo, man. And you know, if not the infection, there's always I don't know tetanus. 
you don't generally get tetanus shots just because. They give you a tetanus shot if something happens to you to cause you to need a tetanus shot. I know this because I went to art school and cut myself with a lot of X-Acto blades, and so I always knew when my last tetanus shot was. Because they'd always ask me at the fucking ER when I got the stitches. Didn't do it on purpose, guys. Like, it, I wasn't an emo kid. I was just really clumsy. But that's from metal. From dirty metal. And paper clips paper rust. Paper clips aren't sterile. No, they're, they're not. Rust. They don't need to be because you use them to hold paper together, yeah. not to put inside your person. Mother, just this is this is all it takes That's is one guy to do this because now I'm now it's making me twitchy about going back to the dentist. I got to go back. I got to get some stuff finished up, and now it's making me twitchy about going back because I'm like, what if the fucker's gonna put a paper clip in my tooth? <laughs> How much money are you possibly saving this way? Is it really worth this? I don't. I mean, I don't know how much those steel, but they leave those in, right? They yes. fill in like yes. the empty root with the little steel posts. Yes. Yeah, because I've had one root canal through the cap that got broken when my. It's a long story. Someone needs to tell hey. this guy that that Steve Martin role. In, in Little Shop of Horrors? That was fictional! Yeah, that wasn't a job training video. It's not a job. God damn. Like, that wasn't your orientation film. I'm just... It makes me mad. That's why they give you the nitrous. Because then they tell you, Hey, you know what? We can't afford steel posts, so we're going to put fucking paper clips in your head. Okay. And you laugh. I you laugh. It's fucking hilarious. And then you don't remember. That's why they give you the nitrous. That's why they give you that. So, the, well, that's the first thing we learned. That's why they give you the nitrous. Yes. That's what we learned tonight. They, that's, they give you the nitrous. Um, we've learned that uh, you can apparently marry a building. Um, you can gay marry a building. And, we did um, learn how to sex a building, and I'm disappointed about that. I know. How, how, do, how do you know? How, how do we know? Like, where are the building's naughty bits? Consider that, everybody. Now there's going to be people wandering their houses looking for genitals. I know! <laughs> Post the videos on YouTube! <laughs> Maybe it's like the drain that runs down the outside of the house, because, you know, every now and then when it rains, spurtage. Just saying. Um, anyway. We've learned that, for so that, that when you're being pursued by the, pan by the, by the cops... Taking your pants off is not going to improve the situation. Ever. Never. And you're, you're, you were either possessed or mind-controlled. Pick one and go with it. Yeah, it yeah. can't be both. Yeah. Commit. Commit to, commit to your insanity plea. Unless it was a robot ghost. If it was a ghost of a robot. No. Dude, I could so sell that script. Don't stop me, man. I could sell that. I could totally sell that. Um, we've learned that apparently if you're going to go out drinking, um, get like a lot of those little dog tags. <laughs> please return to. Yeah, if found. Yeah, because... Case of Goldilocks drunk. Please return to. Otherwise, you end up in bed with somebody's grandpa. Yeah, I still, I still love the fact that she asked him what he was doing. He actually said, "I'm passing out." Yeah, <laughs> he's honest at least. Um, we, we've learned that that dwarf tossing is a thing. Yes, it. I don't get it. I. It, we learned that you know, there there might be treasure under the altar, but. There are better ways to get it. Yes, than a pneumatic or, grill. Yeah, or maybe you just leave it alone, Father. Call somebody. I'm pretty Call sure. Call the fucking diocese and be like, "Hey, I think there's treasure under here." He wasn't going to give that to the church. He was. He was. Well, no. He didn't want to be a priest no more. <laughs> that that that's all there was to it. He's like, "I'm going." Um. There's an old joke about monks and their vow of silence. There's this monk that joins the monastery, and they say, you know, you have to take a vow of silence. You can only speak two words every year. Well, we'll come and get you, and you can speak your two words, and then you go back to your vow of silence. So after the first year, they got him, and they were like, okay, you get two words. What would you like to say? And he says, bad food. No 
okay, you've had your say. The next day, the next year, you know, he does his vow of silence for the whole year. He comes back and they say, you get two words. What would you like to say? And he says, hard bed. Okay. You know, go about your thing. Next, next year, after, you know, 365 days, he comes back and they say, what are your two words? And he says, I quit. And they said, well, that's, un- that's not unexpected. You've done lots of complaints since you got here. Ow. 